This video, we're gonna be doing an all comprehensive mini course on realistment, um, extensions and everything else, because I know it can be very complicated, especially if you're an initial term soldier, trying to figure out what you wanna do for your next duty assignment, where you wanna go, uh, you, the lengths of your contract and everything else. So today in this video, sit tight guys, cause we're gonna be talking about this everything that goes um as far as reenlistment choosing new contracts uh the ability to go uh different places and everything like that i'm just basically going to be making a full course on this um most of this information is going to be coming from da pam uh, 601-280 and that is the army regulate uh well the da pam and there's an ar army regulation for that uh, I believe is similar for other branches but this is specifically for the army other branches um, I would do more research um, and see if this applies to you or not but generally most of the things are gonna be the same for all of the, pretty much all of the branches but then there are just one or two uh, things that are that change um, with every branch but if you are army congratulations um, glad that you're here and glad that you're able to get this information before we get right into the video um, if you do not know me my name is CJ hello um, welcome to the move we're doing a lot of great army content just posting a lot of army content stuff like that military related content make sure you subscribe and let's get right into it a few moments later I'm gonna paint out the scenario you have enlisted into the military you're three years into the military right now and your reenlistment window opens it used to be a year and a half now the reenlistment window is 12 months um, from your ets date so what is ets ets is the date that you're um, expected to get out the army um, so get out of the military in general so that is based off of your contract that you signed at maps or with your uh, recruiter that is it can be either i don't know it, uh, two years three years for typically it's four for the first contract so for example if i came into the military on july 9th of 2019 let's say that my ets day and i signed a four-year contract my ets day would be july 9th 2023 because that's four years and it's the same date right and so it's basically when from when you sign your contract until how long your contract is is out that gives you your ets date now if you have you have to backtrack a year from that date so in that example my re-enlistment window begins 12 months prior so it, it would be july 9th 2022 because that would be a year away if does that are we, are we following if we're not just kind of like go back into the video it, it, it should make sense but basically a year behind right that's when your re-enlistment window opens now this is a great thing because you get to choose your options and what you want to do as far as your career in the military where you want to go and stuff like that because of the fact that when you get into the military at first you don't choose where you get to go for your um, first duty station right they basically what they do is they give you a list of places that you can uh, go to like four um, where are you wanting to go and then they try to get as close to that but most of the time they don't because for me I didn't get anything that was on my list at all and most of my buddies as well nobody really gets what is on your list for your enlistment I have heard of people who have gotten it but that's like one in a few really um so that's basically how that first one goes your second enlistment is where you're able to actually choose your duty station um i so the retention nco that i was speaking to she did say your third enlistment as well you you would have the option but when you say option it's really based off of what slots they have open for your specific mos at the time of when you're contacting your retention NCO. So I mentioned 12 months prior to your ETS date, right? Say for example, you're super busy and you forget that you're in your reenlistment window. Unless you have good NCOs uh, that are gonna tell you like, hey, you're within your reenlistment window and it's time for you to 
start talking to your retention NCO, no one's going to really, you know, be tracking that. So you should really always keep track of that and know right when your time is there. And so you can go ahead and start looking at duty options because what happens if you wait longer than the time that you're supposed to uh, start, it's going to push out your date of arrival. So the, t the date that you're supposed to be at that duty station um, is going to push it out, right? And then your options may change, stuff like that. But generally how it works is when you start talking to the retention NCO, they basically ask you, where do you want to go? You have Oconus and Conus. Oconus is anywhere outside of the United States, continental US. Conus is inside of the States. So again, it's based off your MOS and the availability. So some MOSs, you have a lot of options. Say for me, for example, I'm in the, I'm in the army. I'm able for me and my MOS, I'm able to go to Navy bases. I'm able to go to, that's how I'm in the Navy, on the Navy base right now. I'm able to go to Marine bases. I'm able to basically go to any base except Air Force. I'm able to perform my job at all of these bases. Air Force, they have their very specific uh, military. When I say MOS, I'm saying military occupation specialty. They have their own personnel for to do what I'm doing. But in my job, I'm able to do that at pretty much any base. So that gives me the opportunity to go pretty much anywhere in the world um, and in the US. So when it comes to choosing a place to go, once you get on the phone with your retention NCO, they basically uh, open up the computer program or whatever that uses to track who is leaving from that duty station and what slots are open for your MOS and their duty station. So some people, they go and they do their own research. Like, hey, I would love to go here next. I would love to go to Guam. I would love to go to Japan. I would love to go to Germany. I would love to uh, go to Florida. I would go love to go to California, blah, 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 so and so. so they're like, okay, since I have the option to choose now, most people are like, okay, I, I want to go specifically here. So there's this thing what's called a hotline, which they can call HRC and basically request that this is the specific duty station that you're wanting to go. On your part, you would have to do a lot of research on where you specifically want to go. Say you want to go back home with your fam family, get closer to your family and stuff like that. Again, those slots would have to be open meaning by the time it's time for you to go so you're not going to go like next month or whatever but if it is next month someone has to be leaving and you have to be taking their spot at that duty station right um if you're not uh, if you're not a tow unit a tow unit is a whole different explanation it has really nothing to do with this video specifically but that's how that works if you're a tda unit which is like you're performing your job in the military you have options and same thing for me most 68 fields uh, which is like medical field they get a lot of m more options when it comes to um re-enlistment and stuff like that so that's why it's very important to start at your be the beginning of your window so then you can be like oh wait i want this duty station i'll wait a little bit for it until my ets date or um i don't like any of the options from the list that you guys have given me so i'll wait until new slots open up throughout the following months or so and so and so basically your retention nco would call you and be like hey we have this slot open now um would you like to take this and if you if you want to take it you lock it in the only thing is out of your list if you do not lock in what the options for that time then it's done like you know what i'm saying like if somebody else comes in and takes your option say it's a highly sought out duty station and if somebody else comes in and they take that duty station then you're pretty much done right like you can't choose that option anymore because that slot's already taken up <clears throat> so that's how that worked now let's talk about re-enlistment itself right <clears throat> because in order to have your duties like to go to a new duty station we have to re-enlist because before you, the date of your before your ets you only signed up for an initial contract of let's say you signed an initial contract for four years right um before 12 months before and if you choose a new duty station you would need to put more time on your contract because 
you just have you just need more time in order to fulfill your obligations at that new duty station right so this is how things start getting a little bit tricky and the military may try to get you right there um if you're not trying to say you, you you only planned on doing your four years and getting out but you have a really cool duty station and um, and you want to you know do it if you wanted to go to that next duty station you have to take into factor the time at the new duty station has to be minimum of like two years if your re-up contract has to be a minimum of two years when you're re-enlisting they start the clock back over from the date you re-enlisted you swore in you put your hand say i will protect the united states the clock starts over so your your new contract starts from that date so say you have 12 months left on your contract until you're free to go out of the military but you wanted to re-enlist so then you can go to a, the duty station that you picked so since you re-enlisted the time starts from let's say um your ets is 2024 let's new example your ets is 2024 and we're in 2023 right now, um, we're in 2023. If you re-enlist in 2023, your new ETS date, if you re-enlist for four years, your new ETS date would be 2024, 2025, 2026, 2027. So the next time you would be able to get out of the military completely would be 2027. But since it started from this year, you don't have to do that extra year of on your that, that was on your old contract because your old contract was 2024 as an ets date but your new ets date would be 2027 so that's how they get you right there um so that means you're still in the military for uh, until 2027 if you wanted to get out that was a bummer if you didn't want to get, get out and you were very super excited um for your duty station and to do whatever you wanted to do at that duty station then you're pretty much good you don't really have to worry about it uh, but that's important. And then at that next duty station, your ETS day, say your ETS day is 2027, your um, window is going to open two, uh, 12 months prior to that, which would be um, 2026. Does that make sense now? And then you keep doing it. Um, I believe after 10 years, you become an indefinite soldier. So then you stop building contracts. Basically, the army can um, do anything else uh to you but you start you keep ranking up you keep doing all that stuff um you, you keep your benefits and everything like that as you go out throughout your career so um that's pretty much how all of that those things work the next thing that i wanted to speak about was stabilization and extensions right because i got that confused <laughs> at first so stabilization is the third option so there's like four options for when your re-enlistment window comes up there's oconus which is outside of the u.s conus which is inside of the u.s stabilization which is like okay i want to stay at my current duty station just because i love it and i don't really want to go there here say you got a really cool duty station you you know for sure this is the best duty station and you want to stabilize so you can stabilize for up to 12 months so another year and stay at that duty station. The only thing with that option is if you stay for 12 months, after that 12 months, you're basically at the, you're considered the needs of the army or the needs of the military, whichever branch you are. Um, so what happens there is after that 12 months, the military, you don't get to really pick an option. They, the military um, basically chooses an option for you, a slot that's open at that time, and they basically put you there. So you don't really get to choose at all. Um, so that's the risk of stabilizing at your current duty station. Yes, it's good. You get to stay there, but then, you know, you, you get to go somewhere else. Say you're a year out from your ETS date and you wanted to say, say you're almost closer to your ETS date and you wanted to stabilize at that point it wouldn't be considered a stabilization because you're about to run out of your time in the military, then it would be uh, your only option if you wanted to, 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 to stay at the duty station would be an extension. So an extension is different from a stabilization because when you're extending, you're not signing a new contract, right? When you're doing a stabilization, you're signing a new contract, which would stabilize you for one year 
and then basically after that year you're in the needs of the army unless you go with your retention nco and work up a different deal which i you know i've never really heard of that got much information of that but that's how that would work so if you're at that period and you wanted to stay and you wanted to extend um pretty much you're closer to your ets date and you're about to get out and you wanted to extend um you just extend for that one year you're not signing a new contract or anything like that you just hey i'm doing an extension for another year and then pretty much after that year you would be pretty much free to go after that extension say at the end of that extension your window opens up again so like your window would open up um, right when you do the extension say you want to do say you're you waited a little bit too late and your window opens up pretty much the next following month so then you have to choose your options again and um, you would have to actually re-enlist at that point if you want to continue or you can just wait until your um, your contract expires or your extension expires and then get out of the military um, so that's basically how how all of that works that was a little master class on extensions uh, time requirements at your duty station again how they get you would be your time requirements at your, your 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 duty station your next duty station because you could choose a duty station that you really like and they give you like a report date a time that you have to report um but say you're you want to only do an extension or you wanted only wanted to resign for another two to three years if your report date is a little bit further out it's going to be a little bit harder for you um to actually choose that duty station because if you wanted to do just some time and then get out they have a time requirement at your specific duty station and that you would be going to which is pretty much a minimum of two years so you would have to re-enlist for four years and Finish your time there until your report day. Say so your report day is a year or two years out, which is crazy. Um, finish your time out there, go to your new duty station and do an additional two years because that's the time requirement for that new duty station. Um, I hope this makes sense. Um, the DAPAM uh, 601-280, it doesn't really go in depth about this, like kind of like how I explained it, but it, it's, it gives you the basics. And there's another regulation for that, which I mentioned earlier. Pretty much you have to talk to your retention NCO and your career counselor. Some locations like my location um, doesn't have a career counselor. And I'm trying to make sure that I get myself set up, not what the army wants, the military wants, what I need to do. Because at the end of the day, um, it's your career, right? And so they need to set you up with what you, what is best for you specifically to do. So that's pretty much how reenlistments work and your duty station options and your contract and stuff like that. You do also get into like bonuses if you try to extend or reenlist and or stuff like that. It all depends on how you create your um, contract the needs of the army because it's like a negotiation between the army and yourself try to find a me a, a middle point of what meets your goals and what meets the army's goals because at the end of the day the military is not going to go out of their way to meet your goals and not meet theirs because they still you still have to perform your duty in the military you still have to do your job you still have to meet your time obligations and you still have to do a good like you know do do good work because it's still at the end of the job but you still have to you're trading your um time and your freedom and your you know actively working for the united states and serving in the military so um by you doing that, which is not everybody wants to do this day in and day out, you have to make sure that you're getting the best bang for your buck, if that makes sense, and taking your time and actually doing this correct. So a lot of people will get on me because I, 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 I wanna explore all of my options and see what works best for me. Don't let anyone try to shove you or push you into doing a new contract or doing anything that you don't, don't want to. Take your time and actually go through, 
go through it and ask all of the questions that you need to ask and don't rush. That's what happens to a lot of entry, uh, entry soldiers, initial entry soldiers, because they don't take their time and they, they kind of get hyped. And it's easy to get kind of hyped for a duty station and they lock you in and they say, oh, well, now you have to do so and so many years because you chose this duty station or stuff like that. Everything is a tit for tat, right? Um, and you know, make sure you find a good medium. It's it's a negotiation. Make sure you find a good medium that works for you and the military. That's all I have to say, guys. I hope you guys got a lot of value from this video. Um, if you did, make sure you hit that like button first and foremost, and also make sure you smash that subscription bell. And yeah, share this video to a friend that may need it. Um, if you're in the military or if you're thinking about being in the military, you pretty much have a huge jump up by watching this video. Appreciate y'all, much love, and I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs> Peace. Have you ever had a dream that, that you, um, you had, you, 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 you could, you do, you, you,